So while I did not watch Raw live on Monday night, to mostly my own benefit, I did see on social media the news about the latest inductee into the 2018 WWE Hall of Fame class. Now, while I'm still at war with WWE over one particular selection, this feels like a good kind of apology. I'll never let you off the hook for this one. But this one's okay. Hillbilly Jim is the newest inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame. And if you take one thing and only one thing away from this video, it is that not every main eventer is a star, and not every star is a main eventer. When I think of Hillbilly Jim, I just always get a smile on my face. Like he's one of those ultimate guys in professional wrestling for me that always has and always will make me kind of chuckle, laugh, smile. And it feels like professional wrestling in general, not just WWE, but just in general, could use guys like this. Where are the hillbilly gyms in the world? Where are the hillbilly gyms in professional wrestling? I always thought the connection between him and Hulk Hogan was outstanding, like there was real chemistry there on screen. He was like the ultimate good guy in a lot of ways. Kind of had this all shucks type of action to him, this good old country boy. He was decent and nice to everybody, friendly with the kids, loved the fans, didn't cheat, always abided by the rules, stuck up for the little guy thinking about his match at WrestleMania 3 with the Midgets and King Kong Bundy. You know, you look at Hillbilly Jim, man, and to me he's the perfect example of a real baby face. Like, we don't get a lot of clear-cut heels and true clear-cut baby faces today. And that's not necessarily a good thing. And yes, this is me being older. Yes, this is me yearning for the days of old. But you can take concepts and principles from the past, tweak them, modify them slightly, and still make them work today. And when I think about the way you could utilize a hillbilly gym in friendship angles and tag teams, and you could use him as a guy to get heat on a heel, and then Hogan comes in and kind of saves the day, it feels like you could use that in a professional wrestling today, and you could make a bunch of money. And make no mistake about it, I'm sure you'll have those knuckleheads, those idiots, that are going to sit there and diminish Hillbilly Jim and talk about he was nothing special, he's just another big dude from the freaking Roy days of the 80s, and skippy skipping. But the truth is, the truth is, that Hillbilly Jim was a star. He was a big star. When you think about, he was household. He truly was a household name. This was a guy that was a part of the Hulk Hogan Rock and Wrestling Connection cartoon. You're talking about, he was on the freaking cartoon! He was beaming into millions of households every Saturday morning. He was a star, man, and the people used to light up. The kids loved him. Ladies loved him. Like, even the more hardcore dudes, it's like, eh, it's kind of Hillbilly Jim. He's kind of cool. He's an affable type of guy. It does point back to a more simplistic time, a more simplistic time specifically in WWF history that I always deep down kind of yearn for those days when I was a kid. And it was just the good guys were the good guys and the bad guys were the bad guys. And I loved the good guys and I hated most of the bad guys because they were bad, they were evil. And the good guys stood for something and the good guys meant something. And the good guys were really good guys. And like when you look at a hillbilly gym, it's crazy because it speaks to sometimes the most effective characters. The best characters are simply guys playing who they are with maybe the volume pumped up a little bit. Hillbilly Jim's always been known to me as like a nice guy, kind of affable and, you know, enjoyable to be around, a great conversation, decent to other people. And you could see it with the volume cranked up a little bit. That's who he was on camera. That's who he was in the ring. And he was freaking awesome. I don't care what anybody says. Hillbilly Jim freaking ruled. He ruled. Hillbilly Jim kicked ass. And if you don't like that, you can kiss my ass! Hillbilly Jim was a bigger star in his time as an ancillary bit figure in the whole globalization of WWF than 99% of the current roster today. And don't at 
at me, as the kids say nowadays, because deep down you know it's true. It points back to that great time where so many of these guys were larger than life characters and personalities. And it comes back to that old saying that I just were, said at the beginning of the video. Not every main eventer is a star, and not every star is a main eventer. Hibbley Jim was never a main eventer for WWF, that's for sure. But he most certainly was a star, and that's something that nobody could take away from him. So I know when it comes time for him to come out on Friday night, that WrestleMania weekend, and deliver his speech, I'm expecting a good time. I'm expecting a great speech, and I'm expecting to be able to be a little kid again, and laugh, and smile, and think back on a much simpler time. And how badly deep down I wish I could be so naive about the world and so naive about wrestling that it could still be real to me, damn it! But Hillbilly Jim, man, that's a Hall of Famer. I don't give a crap. You can make your Coco Beware comparisons. You can make a this. You can make a that. Uh, you can kiss my ass. Uh, you can kiss with that. Because I don't care. He was a star. He was a big time star. He was a household name. He was a recognizable guy in their 80s. There is no question about it. You'd have no choice but to be, but being a part of Hulk Hogan's cartoon, being seen by millions of people every week. His likeness, his image, when I think of that time, you know, and you go back and watch some of the old footage, and there's Hillbilly Jim, palling it up with Hulk Hogan, helping him in the gym, helping him train. You know, even the way they introduced him, like, oh my God, this is a freaking fan that's like six foot eight, three hundred and fifty some damn pounds. How many wrestling fans you know are put together like that? Usually it's more like five foot four, four hundred pounds, with a front butt and a goddamn neck beard. Anyways, enough of my fanboy stuff here. But I was looking for things to talk about, and I decided I was going to talk about something positive. Hillbilly Jim gave me some good memories as a kid, so I'll enjoy reliving some of those fun memories as a kid on WrestleMania weekend when Hillbilly Jim takes his rightful place in the WWE Hall of Fame.